Hi everybody, I'm Jeff, and they call me the Blue Collar Scientist. Uh, in our last video, we had a quick and crappy tour of Junk Bond Observatory out at the telescope, and today we're in the office where a lot of the real work gets done, where a lot of the image, image analysis is completed, and where the reports are sent in from. So this is where the, uh, the pictures from the telescope are turned into science and scientific results. I've got with us today Dave Healy, who is the owner and operator of the observatory, and uh, he's going to answer our number one uh, question, which is why is the observatory named Junk Bond Observatory? And then after that, he's going to demonstrate how he takes the images and finds asteroids in them and sends reports off to the Minor Planet Center. So here's Dave. Years ago, I worked for a brokerage house by the name of Drexel Burnham. Some of you may have heard of it. The famous junk bond king, Michael Milken, uh, made billions and billions and billions of dollars uh, uh, in the junk bond market, issuing junk bonds and underwriting. And uh, for his pains, he spent a couple of years in the club fed. Um, my own uh, claim is that I was a stock analyst and was in the clean portion of Drexel Burnham for, uh, for a number of years. And even though the firm went bankrupt, I saved enough money to uh, to uh, establish the observatory. That's why I uh, named it uh, uh, JBO, or Junk Bond Observatory. I'd like to show you uh, how I uh, turned uh, observations that the telescope has made into, into reportable science, uh, positions of asteroids and naming of asteroids. Uh, usually, we will have the telescope take four pictures, four or more pictures of the same region of the sky separated by 15 minutes or separated by, uh, by half an hour, uh, depends on the asteroid. The demonstration I'm going to give you right now is uh, of actually of the asteroid that we named after Rebecca Watson. And uh, we took eight images of Rebecca Watson, that is her asteroid, and uh, I'm going to show you how, uh, how we, we, bring the, we bring the picture uh, we bring the images back into my office here on an internet set. It's an ordinary desktop. I open the visual pinpoint program, which uh, analyzes the observations. I add files. I will at this, at this point just add Rebecca Watson's series of images. This time it's eight images of the same area of the sky load them, command the program to find asteroids. There'll be a little pause while the machine thinks. But they, it will open up eight consecutive images of the same uh, portion of the sky where Rebecca's asteroid was located. First we've got to maximize it and add to the contrast a little bit. First you may see this uh, large asteroid here. This is a, this is a, a a, an asteroid that was discovered years ago, it's fairly bright, but uh, I, I mark them uh, manually. I, I can, I've got a slow motion here, so mark the asteroid, and mark the asteroid, repeat, repeat, eight times. This is not Rebecca's asteroid, but it's a demonstration of how I want to mark them. You notice the yellow cross? I hit the report button, and the, the image goes back into motion and you see a, uh, a blue cross, which means that it has been recorded. Now, you may not be able to see this down here, but there is another asteroid, a very much fainter one, also making more or less the same track in the sky. You stop it, move it to the first position, second position. These are 15 minutes apart, so the asteroids can make a noticeable motion in, in only 15 minutes. Some of them are faint and far away, and we use half hour or one hour, uh, one hour uh, intervals. But here is Rebecca Watson's asteroid moving across with the sky with a yellow cross on it, meaning that's a tentative identification. I hit the report button, and a blue cross appears by Rebecca's asteroid. Now we are done. Uh, now, the, now the when I press the done button, the uh, the pinpoint program will automatically turn the uh, observations which I have made here into 
a report that can be emailed to the Minor Planet Center. So what Dave's showing us here is that he's added the pictures uh, that we expect to find Rebecca Watson, the asteroid, in to our image analysis program, and there are eight of them. These are all astronomical FITS images, and we simply click on Find Asteroids, and the computer thinks about things for a moment, and then it will present us the images. We best maximize this, and basically what this uh, system is doing is that it's uh, showing us the images as a movie. It's displaying one after the other and, uh, and showing it to us so that we can detect moving objects. Now, the image looks terrible, and that's because we are scaling this with a, a sort of a Gaussian contrast scale. Um, it really makes the noise stand out in the image, and it brings out all of the uh, internal reflections of the focal reducer and so forth. It makes them very visible. Um, but it also allows us to see quite faint asteroids, and that's why we use this, um, this feature. So we can stop this and step through it one by one. And there we're at our first image. And I think we'll um, I think we'll increase the contrast a bit here. That looks about right to me. So we can step through this image one frame at a time. And we're going to go over here and we're going to mark this really bright asteroid. You can see that as I click it, it puts a yellow cross around the target. Oh, missed the target there. There, we got it. Now we don't have to do things this way. We can have the computer look for these moving objects on its own, and that works quite well. So we've marked all of these images, and we're just going to report them, say that's an asteroid, and uh, we'll send those positions off to the Minor Planet Center and let them sort out what asteroid it actually is. Now if you notice down here by the cursor, there's another much fainter asteroid that's moving along in a very similar angle and rate of motion as to the bright one, and that is Rebecca Watson. So we are definitely going to get some measurements of that. Okay, we've selected all of the uh, images of her asteroid now, and we can click over here on Report and add that to our report. We're done marking asteroids, so we'll click the Done button, as Dave was illustrating, and we come up with this report, uh, which just shows the, the date of the observation, date and time, the position of the asteroid in the sky, the brightness of the asteroid, and the uh, location from where it was taken. And that's what Dave was showing us.